Welcome back to SV Blown Away. In each weekly episode, we show you our extraordinary lifestyle. Welcome on board. And in case you missed it, this is what happened last week. We took delivery of our new Force 10 cooker. Little did we know, this turned into an expensive coffee table. And we are Natalie, Ian and Nelson, and we are living a life less ordinary. Something a bit different for you. Um, because of the work that we do with covers, canvas work and wood joinery and things like that, we often get asked to do jobs for other people which help sustain our lifestyle. We're making a cover for the back of this boat to protect the transom. Yeah, this is this is starting to lift. Some of the corking's coming out. Probably put a complete bead of corking along that bottom step. So yeah, we're here doing a little bit of work. Doesn't happen often. Can't remember the last time Nat did any work to be honest. Oh, oh. That That's because I pick up the camera. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So yeah, this will go some way to paying for the cooker. So pay for about ten percent of the cooker price actually. Not even enough to get the tax back. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous day to be doing some work. Will this teacher dry out nicely? I'm going to wait until you're sat down, and I'm going to lift that cover up. Oh, hang on, I'm sat down, you're not. That's a really bad idea. Some proof that Ian does do something sometimes. <laughs> My family fails. So which one have you got to pull up? This one. Just that one. And the easiest way of telling whether something's loose or whether it's bonded down with teak, if you run your finger over it. Ah. Do that again. So, stuck, stuck, stuck. Not stuck. Basically, vibrates. Mm -hmm. So this is loose. So it's just that one little corner plank. Just that corner piece. Yeah, the water's got in underneath it because the corking's failed. But he's doing the right thing because he's catching this in time. So hopefully it won't be too bad. But it's a very fiddly piece to remove. Most of the corking on this boat is actually in good condition, which for the boat is probably. 25 years old. Really fine corking. Most of the stone one. You can actually see the plank lifting as Ian is pulling that corking out. Yeah. I just don't want to split the teak because if I do, I've got to make a new piece and it's going to take a lot longer and cost a lot more money. The wood itself is still in good condition. Hasn't been sanded to death, it's bonded and not screwed, so there's no screw heads. It's just a case of lifting it without damaging it. That's what's filled. If you look at that, this cork in here, it's all crumbly. Yeah. So that's just UV damage, probably. And then the water's, and then the water's got a mini. And with a gentle bit of persuasion, we managed to get this corner section out in one piece. We took it back to the yacht, we cleaned it up, we dried it out, and then in the afternoon, we went back to refit it. And while I was doing the joinery, Nat was making this rather splendid cover for the back end of the boat. Good morning. Let's get the date, something like the 7th or 8th of November. And um, we're about to move. So we've been anchored off of Actio and uh, Ionian and Cleopatra marinas, which are actually boatyards rather than marinas really, because uh, all the boats are ashore. 
and uh, we've done the few little jobs we needed. We've collected our cooker, which is the big one. We're now going over onto Provetsa Town Key to meet up with Vasily, who is the electrician who diagnosed the problem with our earthing fault. Um, we're going to see him about our electric motor for our autopilot. Yep, you heard correctly. We are fitting an autopilot. Mm. Uh, talking of autopilots. I'm going to be made redundant, so I'll be looking for work shortly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's where we're going. We're heading over to Provetsa Town Key now, and we need to go find a SIM card as well. Okay, let's go. Okay, anchors on deck. Welcome to Provetsa Town Key. I don't think we're going to get a good night's sleep. And we met up with the electrician. He came aboard, had a look around, said everything was great. We've used him before. Uh, said he was going to order some parts. And then we got message saying that he took his back. And now we can't get a hold of him. Good news is we haven't given him a deposit or anything, so I'm not too worried. I'm hoping he comes through. I'm hoping this works. I like the guy. We'll see. And then we left. Time to go back south. So we're going to head back towards Meganesi and we're going to get on with some of the jobs that we now have parts and materials for. So we're making uh, dinghy chocks because our dinghy's just been sitting on the fender. So I'm just getting a rough shape, the profile of the wood at the moment. You'll notice <laughs> that the deck is cambered. So I've got the my wood in the central position gap here and a gap ever in but it touches in the middle I need to match that get some washer and a pencil <laughs> push that down there get your washer on the wood run that washer give you the curve yeah and now the camber of the deck marked out on the wood so I can now jigsaw the wood panel out to match the profile of the deck so just basically some scrap pieces of tea can ply I can take a very accurate measurement as to where the hole goes. Counter sunk. Counter sunk. Counterintuitive. Specifically placed wood glue. Yep. Always colour between the lines. I was taught this at school as a very young child. You didn't do very well. Look at that bit there. And those bits. It's over the lines. Go away, I've seen you eating crayons. From our very specific screw collection. We found these on the San Costeo um, Polygono in Mallorca. And they had big packs of screws. Really good quality. And now we're starting to run low four years later. 
Good technique. Good technique. I'm good at screwing. Things up. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and then using the using one of these heavier thick planks that I've got over there. The idea is I'll have something like this with a groove cut out of it, and it will slot into there. Sculpted and routed and varnished and made to look amazing. That's Not just G standard, but amazing. Super yacht. It'll be super yacht standard. Cool. Joinery of kings. Mm -hmm. You'd never know a retard had made it. <laughs> Is that both batteries dead? Yep. Our DeWalt batteries now are finished. 100 bucks a piece those DeWalt batteries over here. Each. But you like your DeWalt drill. I love the DeWalt equipment. I just can't afford to keep replacing it. Oh, for a belt sander. You've got a belt sander. Some belts. Yes, we had that in one of our previous videos. Clips I've just watched where you tell me that Nelson threw them all away. <coughs> Must be true. And he goes, no, I didn't. Okay, let's go. Okay. And with some cold, wet weather imminent, the dinghy chocks are going to go on hold, and I need to fix the heater. Hey guys, winter's here. We haven't recorded much of the last week, but Nat and me have been quite ill. Not COVID, we've had tests done, etc. But really bad flu, I guess. I don't know what you call it, but we're still kind of suffering a little bit from that, so we haven't filmed a great deal. I'm trying to get the heater running, temperature's dropped, it started raining. Uh, this, this thing hasn't been run for a couple of years because we, because of COVID, we were in lockdown and we were in a marina, so we had electricity, we had shore power. So we used the little, the little electric heaters that we, we have. So I'm gonna try and get the uh, diesel drip feed Dickinson's heater working. And it's not been touched for two years, so that's why I'm on. Join me. Uh, we have on board, blown away, a Dickinson's Newport diesel drip feed heater, which has proven to be exceptionally reliable. But it is time to do some routine maintenance on it because at maximum setting, we are getting minimum heat, which is a fuel starvation fault. Turmoil, turmoil once again. So we had a problem with our diesel drip feed heater, it's slowly losing its flame. Reason being is that this filter is clogged. So I pulled the filter out and cleaned it, but it's done for, I can't get one. I do have lots of Raycor filters for the engine. So I'm swapping this filter housing off of the heater for this filter housing, which was the old engine one. This was the original one that Volvo fitted that I took off and changed for a, um, a twin pack. But the hose tails are wrong size. So I'm swapping out the hose tails and then we're going to put this on the heater and get it working. And with the new filter housing fitted in the engine room, it's time to turn my attention to the heater itself. So we're just going to clean out the meter in valve. <clears throat> so the front cover comes off, two screws, nice and easy. A couple of screws on here, pop this, take the pipe off. And then it's just a simple little restrictor valve. Um, so I'm just going to clean that and then run some fuel for it and hopefully. So there we have it. Fairly straightforward, just like a carburetor. So the float on the bottom closes off the fuel into this chamber here once it's full. And then this tap on the top is an adjustable meter valve, which allows fuel through that main jet, which then goes into this pipe here and allows the fuel to bubble up inside the burning chamber. These heaters are so simplistic. There's no electrical component to this at all. Very, very simple. So this union here is where the fuel comes in. So if you spin this one off, if you take this one out, in here is a fine wire mesh gauze 
filter it. And as you can see, ours has got some debris in it, which will slow down the fuel supply into this metering valve. So I'm going to pull that apart and clean it. This is an old electric toothbrush, and this is diesel. So what I'm going to do is using the soft bristles of the electric toothbrush and some diesel, which is what this heater runs on. I'm going to backwash that out. These will be fine particles that have managed to get past the filter somehow. Could even be a dog hair. No, it's PTFE. So, so that's an insulation issue. That is a bit of PTFE tape that has got sucked through when this was put together. Nothing major. Yeah, that should now uh, that should cure our problems. <coughs> okay. A new a union ready to go back on. filter cleaned out. These are two fairly soft materials so we've got aluminium casting and brass fitting so I'm not going to go crazy tight with this. Literally finger tight. PTFE will seal it. It's a low pressure valve anyway so that hopefully will be sufficient that it doesn't leak. I really need to run this through. I want to get that dirt out because I know there's dirt in the fuel line. No, that's, just, that's, that's as much as it is. It's not going to allow me to do more than that, so I'm going to have to do it into this baking tray and then just clean it out with some thinners or something. Might be right. Okay, just flick it on, and I'll shout to you to turn it off when I'm ready. Okay, that was like a proper uh, jet. I didn't anticipate that. Well, it certainly seems like we cured the problem of the fuel supply to the heater. Okay, turn it on. Ready? There you go. On. Jobs. They're never five minutes. Just simple little things that you want to do. Never a five minute job. Ever. Okay, now we're going to pressurize the system again. Just flick the fuel pump on briefly and then straight back off, please. And again. And again. And again. Okay, on and leave it on. Okay, let's try now. Okay, I've got no leaks. Okay, so we've got fuel in the bottom. Break up a small piece of the fire lighter. And I want this on top of the wet fuel. So I just use one of our forks so we can control where it goes. So we've lit the fire lighter. So we've now got a fire lighter lit. And what we have to do is put that down inside. And that should be enough to ignite the diesel eventually and um, get things started. So we'll close the front end of the heater. And then down here on the side is 
a fan and the fan is designed same as a furnace it's blowing air through the flame through the fuel and that should accelerate the process brilliant little heaters these it used to run on about three on here on the meter valve it used to run on about three which was sort of half heat so we'll see what it does now hopefully we've cured the problem Never a dull day. No, you're in charge of watching the fire because I've just lit it. We're testing it. Okay. Furnace. And it's on a variable switch. So you choose how much air you want to pump in there. You see the metal frame in there starting to glow red hot already. It doesn't take much to get it to the right heat. Back the fan off. And that is absolutely perfect. Yellow flame above the burner ring, nothing but blue underneath it. Fixed it! Happy now? No, you're in my way, I can't get to it. Well, that didn't take you long. Should be fixed now, it should work okay. I'll have a warm cup of cocoa, please. And instead of being on maximum, it's now on... One and a half. 1.5 instead of five. Fantastic. So, what I was thinking it's is... It's going to be too warm, yeah. <coughs> if you can get me a hot cocoa, and a blanket. Because it is like the 20th of November. You're feeling better, aren't you? No, I'm not. That's why I need mm. the cocoa. You cook very well. Moving. Um, we're going to go back to a town dock. We're going to tie on to a town dock. It will give us free water and electricity. Meet our new grandson, Lucas. Congratulations, Sam and Kaylee.